Hello friends! It is Wednesday and that means that it's time for Summer Kids Club. Can you believe summer is almost over? How are your preparations for school coming? Are you ready? Do you know what your plans are for the fall? I know for us and for a lot of families there's still a lot of things that we're not quite sure how it's gonna work. And what I'm grateful for is that God goes before us. What that means is no matter where we're called to go or, or whether or not we know how things are going to work out or what's going to happen, God knows and God is already there taking care of the things before we can even get there. And that's what today's story is all about. God goes before us. Well, why don't we just turn things over to our storytellers and enjoy today's story. Today's story took place in a time when God's people, yet again, had broken their promises to God. So, since they were following other gods, God allowed their enemies to take over. They were ruled by a Canaanite king named Jabin, but he used his armies to make life miserable for the Israelites, and the leader of those armies was... Sisera. You there, burn the fields. If they can't eat, they can't cause trouble. And you, take the war chariots and attack the village. Take whatever you want and burn the rest. Well, what are you standing around for? March! It was a scary time for God's people. Sisera's army was strong. They had these unbeatable iron chariots, 900 of them. Those iron chariots were like the army tanks of today. With his strong army and his terrifying tank-like chariots, Sisera's army attacked and oppressed God's people for 20 long years. Finally, God's people cried out to the Lord. Save us, Lord. We've turned away from you for far too long. It's you who can save us from Sisera and his chariots. Now at that time, God's people were led by a woman named Deborah. Now Deborah was a prophetess. That's a woman who speaks God's word to the people. Deborah was also a judge. That means she was a leader of the people. She would sit under a certain tree and God's people would come to her and she would help them solve their problems. And one day, sitting under the tree, God gave her a message. For the people. Take this message to Barak, the son of Abinoam. Listen, the Lord, the God of Israel, has commanded. Go, march to Mount Tabor with 10,000 warriors. God will make it so that Sisera is there, with his chariots and his army near the river Kishon. I will give them into your hand. You will destroy them. And Barak received the message. It's an exciting message, isn't it? Go and be the hero your people have been waiting for. And Barak's name means lightning. What a cool hero name. Go lightning, strike Sisera and his chariots. But Barak answered Deborah saying, If you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. Barak was ready to be a general. He was ready to lead 10,000 troops. But he wouldn't do it without one person and a woman. Now, you and I know that many women are amazing warriors and leaders. But back then, it wasn't normal for women to do that. Why did Barak think the battle depended on her? Here's why. Deborah was God's chosen leader. Barak wanted her with him because he knew they weren't going to win the battle because he was an amazing leader or because they had 10,000 troops. They would only win this battle if God was with them, if God went ahead of them like, like a shield, if God won the battle. Deborah answered him, I will go with you, but know this, the honor of defeating Sisera will not go to you. God will let Sisera be defeated by a woman. So they got up, gathered those 10,000 troops, and marched to Mount Tabor. Sisera heard about this army. 
10,000 out in the open, this is gonna be too easy. Ready the war chariots. Those Israelites are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> so there they were, the army of God's people led by Deborah and Barak, and the massive army of Sisera with all his chariots. Arise, Barak, for this is the day that the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Behold, the Lord has gone before you. You heard her, warriors? Charge! And Barak. Like the lightning he was named after led those 10,000 troops down the mountain into the battle. And God went ahead of them. Sisera's army and all of his chariots were destroyed right there by the river Kishon, just like God had said. But then... Ugh, well this doesn't look good. Um, hey guys, uh, keep fighting over there. Uh, um, keep fighting. I'm gonna go over here and check something in the the back of the lines. Yeah, that's where I'm going to be, the back of the lines. And he hopped out of his chariot and ran away on foot, leaving all his armies and chariots to be destroyed. But that doesn't mean he got away. Let me tell you the rest of the story. And here's a warning. The next part is a little intense. So, uh... You might want to grab a, a pillow or blanket or teddy or something. Okay, here we go. So Sisera ran and ran. Eventually he came by a tent and a woman named Yael came out and greeted him. Excuse me, sir, over here. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Come and rest in my tent. Say hi to my tent. That's a good idea. I am kind of tired from running. Yes, come in. Come in and lay down. Ah, yes. Just what I needed after a day like this. That's right. You're all sweet. Can I have some water? I'm pretty thirsty after all that running. I can do you one better. Here's some fresh goat's milk. Oh, my favorite. Thank you. Yum. And he fell asleep. <coughs> and as he slept, Yael crept away. She picked up a hammer and a tent peg, like the kind you would use to hold a tent in the ground. She crept up to where he was sleeping, next to his head, and... Yikes! I warned you it was gonna get intense. <laughs> Thought I was hugging a pillow. <laughs> okay, back to the story. Before long, Barak came in pursuit of Sisera, and Yael came out of the tent to meet him. Over here, sir. I can show you the man you've been chasing. Oh, you know where he is? Oh, but be careful. He's a very dangerous man, and he... What did you... Oh. Oh. Yikes. And so Sisera's armies and chariots were no more. And Sisera himself was defeated by Yael and her tent peg. The honor went to a woman, just as the prophet Deborah had foretold. And God's people lived in peace for 40 years. Well, what did you think of that story? It's not really the ending you expect, is it? And it's not the ending, I think, that the people who lived this story expected. When you think about it, who's gonna be the hero of this story? There's a general named Barak, named Lightning. That's gonna be the hero, right? Or we learn about Deborah, and even though she's a woman, and in that time you don't often think of women as warriors and leaders, these people did. They put their trust in her. Maybe she'll be the one that will win. But it was a woman who was just standing there by her tent, and she was the one that, huh, 
well, brought an end to Sisera's bullying rule over the people. Now hopefully none of us have to do the kinds of things that Yael did in our story, but all of us have things that are there for us. Like she had her, her tent peg and her, and her hammer. But if you think about what else she had, she had a tent. And she had hospitality that's, that's being welcoming. She had warm milk that she could give this bad guy uh, to help him go to sleep. These are the things that someone who was a wife and, and lived in a tent would always have. And there are things that we have, things that you have. Maybe it's your toys that you have, or maybe it's the things you have in your home, or it's the things that you've learned about in school or in church. Maybe it's part of your personality. Maybe you're someone that loves to be a helper. Maybe you're tall, or maybe you're short, and you have a parent like me who likes it when you can help them pick up the things that are down low. God gives each of us tools. Some of it pieces of who we are, some of it things that we've picked up in our story that God wants to use for things that none of us ever imagined. And the cool thing is when God calls us to do those things, even if they're scary or, or if we don't know all the answers, God goes before us. So all of our activities today have something to do with how God goes before us and, and how we can use our tools in unexpected ways. So let's get to today's activities. In this week's activity packet, you should have received a foam shield and some foam star stickers and hearts and things like that. That's gonna be your main craft. Uh, the papers that you received this week include your cover letter, which explains this activity and all of the others, along with some coloring pages and activity sheets for you to do on your own. You'll also see a tan cardstock, another shield that keep, keep handy, we might use that in a few minutes. This week we talked about how God goes before you, just like God went ahead of Barak and Deborah into the battle. And so God goes before us like a shield. God's there to protect us. God already knows everything that's going to happen. So we're making a shield this week. It should be pretty simple. You're welcome to use the stickers on the foam in any way you like. And if you'd like to get some markers to add to the design, go ahead and do it. Enjoy. When you finish designing your shield the way you like it, you can have it. Put it somewhere where you can see it and remember that God goes before you. You also got that tan cardstock shield. If you would like to, you can follow the directions on that, color it, cut it out, and use it to tell the story that you learned today. And if you want to combine these things, we sent you a glue stick a few weeks ago. You could always, after you cut it out and color it, Use your glue stick to stick it to the other side of your shield. Or keep them as two separate shields. That is up to you. Enjoy! Here's an activity to do with your family. In our story this week, JL used a tent peg in a way I don't think many folks would have imagined using it. Sit in a circle and choose an object that you can hold in your hands. As you pass it around the circle, each person will explain a way that it could be used that isn't what it was designed to do. An extra challenge is, think of a way that is not using it as a weapon. Jail took that one. If you're using a fork, maybe the first player would say, Ah, it's a back scratcher. The next player might say, This is a deluxe four-point balloon popper. Now it's your turn, have fun. All right. For this week's game, we are going to play a game called Bird, Beast, or Fish. It's a great way to mem remember all the things that God has created in the living world. 
So what you do is you take, you have to think on your feet because what you're gonna do is say a person's name and then give them one of the three categories, either a bird, a beast, or a fish. And they have to, as quickly as they can, name something from that category, either a bird, a beast, or a fish. So if I were to say, Maddie, beast, she would have to come up with a beast, which in this case would be a mammal or anything that's on the land, essentially. So, ready, Maddie? Maddie, beast. Dog. Oh, good one. Give me fish. Say goldfish. I'm not coming up with anything. Okay, sometimes you don't want to play. Daddy fish. Fish. Um, um, swordfish. Ooh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Name an animal. Emma. <laughs> uh, name a, a, a bird. <laughs> Maddie, name a bird. Robin. Ooh, good one. Dad. Fish. Yeah. Dolphin. In this game, dolphins are mammals, but they are still in the water, so they count as fish. But that's the game, so see how long you can go before you have to repeat an animal. Probably going to be a really long time. Most, most of you kids know a lot of animals. And Maddie likes to try to trip me up by saying fish. And I don't know that many fish, so have fun with this game. Here's an activity you can do by yourself. In this story, the heroes are not exactly who you would expect. But what about in your story? Who is or has been an unexpected hero in your life? Choose someone that you know, write a story, or if you're up for something really fun, draw a comic about how they have saved the day in your life. Then think about sharing your story with your hero so that they can know how God is using them and how much it has mattered to you. Okay, so now let's stand up, do the motions, and sing our song for the summer. If you 
amen. And friends, we only have two weeks left of Summer Kids Club. We're still going to be doing videos, and we'll still even be mailing you things. Uh, maybe not as heavy craft stuff, because I know you'll be starting school and have your own projects and, and work to do for that. But we do want to, as the summer ends, put together that video with all of you singing the song that we've learned together this summer. So please, this week if you can, ask your mom or your dad or, or a brother or sister who has a, a phone that can make a video to record you as you're doing the motions to the song that we just sang. Have them replay it, get up and, and do the motions, record it, and, and message it to me. You can have your mom or dad email it to me or send it as a message on Facebook, or if you have my phone number, you can text it to me. And then I can put it together so that as the summer ends, we'll have this song with all of us singing it and doing the motions together. And I think that would be just a beautiful way for us to end our summer of, of Summer Kids Club. So please, send those videos in. And any other videos or pictures you'd like to share with us, we would love to see them. Would you pray with me? God in heaven, thank you so much that you go before us. You call us to strange and unexpected adventures. You call us to use the tools that you give us in, in creative and, and maybe some ways that, that we would never have imagined. But there's nothing that you call us to do where you haven't gone before us, where you aren't already there. So thank you, God, that you go before us. And as we go into this week in whatever adventures you have for us, go before us. We love you, God. Thank you for being our strength and our shield. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, friends. Have a wonderful week. Grace and peace.